Ayahuasca is a scary thing to try. I know because I just went through a week in which I had four ayahuasca ceremonies in a row and that was scary, physically and mentally demanding, heartbreaking and life-changing. Now what happened to me during the ceremonies? What did I see and experience? Was it beneficial and would I ever do it again? I'll answer all of that and more in the next few minutes. Hey guys, Greg Gostinger here, the founder of Your Inception. I recently spent a week in Costa Rica for the ayahuasca ceremonies. I didn't attend just one, but actually four ceremonies in a row. And that was mind blowing. And those four ceremonies caused massive shifts in my thinking, my habits, and quite honestly, they changed me a lot. Now, even though I did a ton of research before I decided to try ayahuasca myself, I was still nervous about what it would feel like. Would I die? Would I get stuck in this weird hallucinatory state forever? Would it be worth it? Now, for those who are new to psychedelics, just hear me out. Ayahuasca is an ancient South American plant medicine that has been used for centuries to heal physical and emotional trauma. It's an incredible tool for healing, but it is also not something that you should take lightly. You don't believe me? Just quickly check how I looked like about an hour after the first ceremony ended. So, uh, it's about 5 p.m. in the morning after the first um, session, the first uh, ceremonial, the first plant medicine trip. And I am just, uh, I know you can barely see me. Yikes. Yeah, that was very scary. I honestly thought I was losing my mind. So why is there such a big hype about it if it's so demanding? Well, because ayahuasca contains DMT, a psychedelic substance that can cause altered state of consciousness. And what many scientists have discovered is that if you drink Mother Aya, as it is often called, in the right setting and with the right intention, it may help with your anxiety, depression, PTSD, and many other conditions. As a matter of fact, many say that one ayahuasca ceremony is as powerful as 10 years of psychotherapists. Now, before I tell you if there's any truth in that, let's talk about my experience. So when I decided I was going to try ayahuasca, I wanted to do it somewhere I'd feel safe and comfortable and not in the middle of the jungle like many do it. So I booked my stay at Ritmia in Guanacaste, Costa Rica, which is a premium resort and one of the most well-known places for plant medicine therapies. Now you can learn more about the place in the link below or you can watch my full review which will pop up by the end of this video. So I've stayed in Ritmia for a week from Saturday to Saturday and I've done four ayahuasca ceremonies from Monday till Thursday and that was a lot. Now let me quickly share with you what happened on each particular day before I tell you whether this is something you should consider doing. So on Monday was my first ceremony, which started at around 5.30 p.m. Before that, we had a few workshops and preparation classes, which were quite necessary because most of the people were kind of scared and anxious about it, including myself. Now after the lunch at around 2 p.m., I went back to my room, I've called my girlfriend and my best friend who promised me they will be there for me the next morning when I return back to my room in case I needed anything. So I took a short nap, I wrote down my intention, which is super important uh, before each ceremony. I've changed my clothes and then I slowly walked towards the Maloka, the place where the ceremony happened. So I got in and what I saw were about 90 mattresses on the floor and each had its own bucket, yes, for puking, and toilet paper Yes, for shitting. The shamans were already in during their own things. And when I saw the whole setup, I was like, what the f am I doing here? Anyway, that was my ego talking. So I knew I had to go in, find a mattress and just focus on my breathing. Anyway, after the whole introduction, which lasted for about an hour, there was a call for the first cup of Aya. I went into the line and I can tell you I was scared to death. But once you're there, it's kind of hard to run out. So. I drank my first cup of ayahuasca, which wasn't really tasty, but definitely drinkable. Then I went back to my mattress and five minutes later, boom, I was blown into the space where I was talking to Jesus and Buddha and nah, I'm just joking. Nothing really happened for the next 45 minutes until the second call. I went back into the line, drank the second cup of ayahuasca, went back to my mattress and that's when it got very, very scary. Someone close to me started screaming, one person started crying, Many were puking their soul out and it all started to feel like a nightmare. You cannot escape. And what was even worse was that I was completely sober, but I started to feel very nauseous. When they called for the third cup, I was so sick, I couldn't even open my eyes. So I just stayed there 
during the whole night wondering why am I doing this? I couldn't purge, I thought I wasn't high or drunk, and I was 100% convinced that I was completely present the whole night until about 4 in the morning when the ceremony ended. So when I got back to my room, I had my camera set up ready to record a short video, and that's when this happened. Uh, I know you can probably barely see me because of the light, but it's about 5 a.m. in the morning, something like that, after the first ceremonial, the first plant medicine trip. And I'm feeling sick like hell, like my brain is just not functioning. I had this setup with the camera and mic, I just had to press the button, you know, like record. I just couldn't do it. It's so funny, I mean, I read about this before, and I was like, what the fuck? But now, oh, I see, I see, I see what people meant. You know, your brain just doesn't function. So no, I wasn't sober, not at all. And I was so confused that I spent about 15 minutes trying to turn on the camera. And that really scared me because I thought, well, here you go, Greg. You fry your brain, so say goodbye to a normal life. After that scary experience, I tried to fall asleep for about two to three hours before our morning yoga, but I just couldn't do it. So without any sleep for about 24 hours, I went directly to yoga, still feeling sick. So then the next ceremony happened. And you can imagine that after the first one, I felt even worse about the second one. However, the second one was much better. It was very emotional, so I was crying a lot. And then this magical thing happened to me, which is hard to explain on the video, but I connected to one of the shamans in a way I was never connected to anyone before. And it was so beautiful and so empowering. Well, I can tell you that from that moment on, I 100% trusted ayahuasca is the real deal. So I've just finished my second plant medicine ceremony. Um, and um, I'm feeling way better than after my first one. Uh, today was quite emotional. <laughs> I was able to purge, which is super important. And uh, from that moment, uh, things are happening. I started seeing things, um, but it was mainly emotional. I was crying for a couple of hours, I think. Um, it was just amazing. <laughs> I feel so blessed and um, so happy. Yeah, that's all I wanna say. So the ceremony ended at about 3 to 4 a.m. and I was able to sleep for about 3 hours that night, which felt amazing. The third day was one of the best days in my life. The shamans were playing such a nice music and I was able to drink 4 cups of ayahuasca, which was probably the reason why I puked so many times that night and I spent quite some time on the toilet as well. But when all the crap went out of my body, pun intended, I felt reborn. So I started dancing, which I hated until that moment, I never danced in my life. And during the dancing, I was getting rid of all of my fears. I was also able to speak to the mother Aya, which now talking about it still sounds crazy, especially because I can't rationally explain what actually happened. But don't worry if you don't get it, just go through the experience and you will know what I'm talking about. So this is the third night of plant medicine ceremony. It's about three in the morning. I just returned back home, well, back to the room. And again, I'm sorry for the setup, I'm sorry for the light, I'm sorry for everything. Oh, that's the best I can do at this very moment. Um, I'm still feeling it <laughs> right now. And this is a feeling of being spiritually high. So high that you can't get to this point, I think, by any other way. Um, I, I don't feel like talking too much. Yes, I don't have many words at the moment in my mind. My mind is kind of empty. I wanted to record this still just to, you know, share something. But um, what happened tonight was so crazy that um. I don't think I should share this, this with anyone because if anyone hears what happened, anyone that wasn't at the place today, um, they'll think I went crazy. Well, not just me, we all went crazy. We did went, we did go crazy, actually. It was just a very positive crazy. <laughs> and um, 
the most amazing and the most unforgettable night in my life. After the third night, and again only about three hours of sleep, the last night happened, which was a bit different because we drank a different type of ayahuasca called yahe. I think that's how they pronounce it. And this is a much stronger version and more disgusting one. In addition to that, we had an all-nighter, so we started at about 8 p.m. and we finished the ceremony at 9 in the morning. And this happened after only six hours of sleep during the previous three days. So you can imagine how I felt the morning after the ceremony. Now that last ceremony was quite easy on me. I mean, I did purge a lot and I puked my shirt, which wasn't very pleasant, but no one really cared, I guess. After that, I slept for quite some time because I needed to sleep. So this was quite a restorative night. Still very hard though. So that's what happened during the four nights of ceremonies. Of course, there are many more crazy stories to share. Maybe I'll make a special video one day just about those stories. Now, will I ever take ayahuasca again? And who is it for? Unlike other popular psychedelics, ayahuasca takes quite some time to kick in. You may have to wait for three to four hours and you're usually in a group of at least 10 to 20 people or like in my case of about 85 people. So there's so much energy in the room that the whole experience immediately becomes much harder. Now I went to Costa Rica because I was interested in the experience, but before going there, I didn't really have a very strong reason to go there. I was feeling mentally well, there was no depression, no anxiety or anything like that. And that's what made the experience very, very challenging. Because of that, I believe that ayahuasca is the best for people who are going through a very challenging situation in their life. Whether this is depression, PTSD, the loss of a loved person, or they don't know what they're doing with their life. Having a strong reason will definitely help you go through the whole experience. Now, if you're someone who wants to grow personally or spiritually, you should consider going on a such experience. But do know it's going to be tough and challenging because once your ego gets shut off, and you see everything the way it is, it can just get very, very brutal and there is no way to stop it. Now, of course, if you take any medication or if you have any medical conditions, you need to discuss this with your doctor and the center you're going to visit because they know who is Mother Aya safe for and if you should avoid it. Now, just before I tell you if I will ever take Aya again, let me answer this question from the beginning of the video. Is one ceremony of ayahuasca as effective as 10 years of psychotherapy? Well, obviously this is hard to answer, but to be honest, I don't think this is true. However, what I believe in, based on my experience with Mother Aya and with psychotherapy, is that four nights of ayahuasca in a row can probably help most people get rid of their traumas and you may need months or years of psychotherapy to achieve the same result. So after speaking to doctors of psychology and great psychotherapists, we all agreed that ayahuasca is so powerful that you cannot compare it to psychotherapy in any way but that doesn't mean it is for everyone. So would I ever do it again? Look, it's been about two weeks since I returned back home and I'm still not quite myself. I have ups and downs in my energy. I'm still physically weak. I actually lost about four kilograms in a week, which is about nine pounds. I still have many questions I wanna answer. So it's been quite tough. On the other hand, I decided to make some important decisions like I've changed my morning routine, I've deleted most social media apps from my phone, I've stopped hanging out with people who are very negative and all of that has had a very positive impact on my well-being. Right now, I don't believe I wanna go through the whole experience once again, but that's because I'm still very weak and I need more time to recover. Maybe in the future, I'll change my mind, who knows? Now, if I'm going to do it again, I'll probably go to Rhythmia or a similar center because they have hundreds of people employed there to support you 24 seven. And trust me guys, most people need some kind of a support. And lastly, if I decide to do it again, I'll do it with a very clear and strong intention. That's what I know for sure. So for the end, I think this clip that I shot after the first night of ayahuasca ceremony explains a lot. Whatever you think you know about life, whatever you think you know about yourself, your ego, <laughs> yeah, just forget it, you know, because you're all wrong. <laughs> like. They're not wrong, you just don't know shit <laughs> until you experience this. Because when, when you hear a voice coming from the speakers, calling your name and telling you, hey man, hey, hey Greg actually, using my name actually, it's at Grega, my original name. 
just surrender. Stop controlling the moves. Just surrender. And I'll answer answer all of your questions. And then you surrender and she start answering all of your questions. I mean that's that's just insane. It is beyond what's possible, what I believe was possible. It's beyond my imagination. Like there is I mean no way I could ever possibly imagine a scenario like the one that happened today. No. Nah. There's just no way. Okay. I gotta go to sleep. Because I have some things to process. As soon as I have some energy. <laughs> Now, if you want to go to Rhythmia, there's a link below, so just check it out. You can also watch my whole experience from Rhythmia up here. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you soon again. Stay well.